Today I've got a scooter from Korea. This is the Roveron Coulter. scooters just flaunt how much power they have. This one doesn't, and so I'm curious. Either are they scared of the power, or does it have so much power it would scare you? Let me run you through the speed. It's gonna kick off one of the motor to start. Speed mode one first. One is 20, two is 31, and three is also 31. That's typically what I see when I switch off one motor, that speed mode one and two have a big separation, but then two or three are pretty much neck and neck, if not the same. So anyway, 31 miles per hour is what you can expect with just one motor. Now I'll kick on the other motor and run that test again. One is 17, two is 32, three is 43. Woo! 40 miles plus was what I was expecting to get with a scooter in this price range, however, I wanted to go faster. 43 miles per hour felt so good and stable, I, I wanted to push it more. So to see how it felt at higher speeds, I found a hill. <laughs> 44, 46, can we get 50? Come on, there's 50, oh yeah. Man, that is smooth, no stem bubble. Oh yeah, oh that's exactly what you want to feel at 50 miles per hour. I got the coveted 50 miles per hour. I don't think I've ever gone 50 miles per hour on a scooter before. But when I hopped off, my arms and legs were, they were all like jello -y and weak. It's just crazy to go 50 miles per hour standing up. Anyway, before moving on to acceleration, there's just a few more things about speed. Keep it on speed mode three, dual motors. I'm gonna hit the eco turbo button. This switches the scooter to eco. Let's see how fast that goes. That tops out at 25 miles an hour. A lot of scooters have that eco button, which is a nice feature because if you do wanna lower the top speed, you can just hit that and it basically cuts the power in half. Or you can go into the advanced settings and do it manually, which I'll show you now. In the P menu on P level eight, you can actually change the power output. So I'm gonna lower that to 50% and see how fast it goes at that point. And this is still with both motors and turbo. And that tops out at 28 miles per hour. So the nice thing about adjusting the power is that if you're on a paved trail and you have a speed limit, say 20 miles per hour, you can limit the power to match the speed limit. Power delivery can be a deal breaker with these dual motor high powered scooters. Some have a super sporty throttle, so when you hit it, it just you're skidding the tires for 30 or 40 feet, and then a month later you have no tread on your tires and you're wondering what's going on. And then some are just too slow off the line where you wish it had more power. The power delivery with the Coulter is spot on. You got some options as far as acceleration. In P7, you can change it from a slow to a fast start. I want to show you the difference between the two. This is a slow start. Ooh, and that is very slow. Wow, no spin on the tires. All right, let me switch that to level zero, which is a fast start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! That's a little bit of a difference. A bunch of these types of scooters have that slow and fast start option, but most of them, when I switch between the two levels, I really can't tell any difference. That is not the case with this. In P level five, you can switch it from a zero to a non zero start. So if you'd like to kick these before the power comes on, you have that option. I'm curious if I change the power output from 50 to 100%, if that also affects the acceleration. This is set to 50%. Oh, geez, I'm gonna spin off the road. <laughs> that, uh, that did not feel any difference. And then here's 100. Yeah, that's, I don't think there's any difference between the two. Just to be sure, let me overlap the video. And just like I thought, there's no difference. The only thing that changes is the top speed. Last thing is I wanna know if the eco and turbo affects the, the takeoff power. So first on eco. Yeah, I don't think so. And then turbo. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. When I overlap the video again, you can see that there's no difference right off the line. It eventually starts to separate, and that's because eco doesn't go as fast as turbo. The last thing I wanna show you about acceleration 
is the difference in takeoff power between the three levels. All three levels have the same acceleration. And just like Eco and Turbo, they start to separate because each level has a different top speed. There's two things I look for in a high powered dual motor scooter. One is how fast it can go, and two, how well can it climb hills? Okay, this hill shouldn't be any problem for this. It is a 15% grade, it's two blocks long. Got speed mode three, dual motors. Still climbing 15, oh, that's so 16, 15, <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, you got plenty of power. Wow, back up to 16, coming up close to the top and that's it. 15 miles per hour up a 50% grade hill is just fantastic. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> With a lot of power, you need some high-end brakes and you've got them. You've got Zoom hydraulic brakes. I like the design of the lever. It's kind of funky looking. It's more natural filling and has a place where two of your fingers just fits. Doesn't take a lot of pressure to engage the brakes. And the right side controls the front, the left side the rear. You got five different regen brake levels. So level zero, when I release the throttle, there's no braking, just coast nice and smooth. And then as you would imagine, when I hit the brakes, it's just all 100% disc. I got to switch to level five now and releasing the throttle, Still coast just like before. See the reaction time when they come on, so I'm pulling the lever right now. Ooh, almost instantaneous. And when they come on, it's a little abrupt. You can really feel them come on. I don't know if you can see the scooter kind of, or me rather, move when I hit them. And then for some hard braking, here we go. Ooh, yeah. Now, I think that back wheel came up a little bit, so you've got some tremendous braking. There's like this sweet spot of pressure in the levers to have a nice gentle stop. It feels like the harder you squeeze, the faster those regens come on. Overall, level five was too abrupt for me, especially for light braking. I lowered that to level three and enjoyed the ride much more. At this point in the review, I like the scooter. It has held up very well to my test. With this next test, that's where I fell in love with it. This has a monstrous 31.5 amp hour battery and it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes for a very long time. When I got back to my truck, the battery showed 8%, but this is the type of scooter where it needs to sit for a while to give an accurate readout. So about a minute later, it went up to 11%. And my app recorded 27.15 miles with 1,438 feet of elevation gain. Those stats by themselves are pretty awesome. 27 miles is a long ways, but here's the kicker. I was averaging 36 miles per hour. 36 miles per hour and 27 miles I've never, I've never got that before. That's insane. Usually when you go that fast, you're getting like 10 to 15 miles. This has a rating up to like 65 miles. So if you rode it more conservatively, uh, I think you could definitely get that. So the first thing I noticed when I popped this out of the box was of course the color. The baby blue matches my baby blue eyes. No, it doesn't, but you know, I, I, I want it to. That is just gorgeous. But it does come in three other colors, black, white, and green. Of course it is foldable. It's got a quick release folding mechanism. So just lower that down. It weighs 65 pounds, can carry a rider up to 265 pounds. It's also great if you wanna do some squats. Two, three. Ooh, that does burn, wow, okay, great. There's two charge ports on the side. They give you one charger, which takes 18 hours, or if you have a fast charger, you can lower that down to four hours. One of the only things I didn't like is the positioning, and it's a combination of a couple things. First is the deck isn't long enough. For something this powerful, I like to have a wide stance. Usually I like to have about that wide of a stance, and then when I hop up on the scooter, I'm going on that fin about two or three inches. So with this, I have to put my feet closer together, and then the stem is angled back towards the rear of the scooter, which I I don't like because that pushes you to put more weight on your rear foot and therefore your foot gets tired easily than if you had a nice balanced distribution. I just found that the whole time I was riding I was kind of fidgeting trying to find that perfect spot. One thing I want to point your attention to is how far you're standing off the ground. I mean that is a huge clearance but the machine is built and designed so well that you still have tremendous balance. Well, for balance, it, oh geez, oh, hit the throttle without uh, holding on with both hands, and that was a little scary. <laughs> but when you don't do that, you can easily ride it without one hand. 
It is very well balanced. I like the width of the handlebars. Not too wide, not too narrow. You got nice handling and control. Scooter is actually pretty lightweight. It's not light enough to where I can bunny hop it fully, but pop up the front tire, not a big deal. You know, even coming off a pretty, pretty big curb, it woo, just handles that like you'd want. I think I actually bottomed out these shocks when I did that. This is a seven inch curb, pop up the fronts, gun it. Oh yeah, made it up. I really like the control you have on this. It allows me to do stuff that I really don't feel comfortable doing on a lot of models, a lot of different brands. Slide out the back tire, around a corner. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Pretty fun scooter. The feel on this is just awesome. There's no wobbling, no vibrating, no noise. In the sound of the motor, man, it reminds me of the DeLorean on Back to the Future when he punches it. I'm the kind of guy that likes to have a cool sound with your toys. And you can't collapse the handlebars. You just pull these out. Then when you pull them back up, they just snap into place. Now, as far as the grips go, I like the design. Very comfortable, they're stationary. It's just a very natural feel. It kind of molds to the contours of your hand. I like the stem height. The angle, not so much, but the height is a good height for my 5'11 frame. I can reach past about nine, 10 inches. Moving down to the deck, I already talked about how short it is, and I'll just show you here. I have 10 and a half inch shoes. So one in front of the other, that goes, pretty high up on that fin, but the width is nice. I can fit my feet side by side and they actually, they don't hang off on either side. One of the cool things about this that I haven't seen is most decks, they just come out and it's a 90 degree angle down. This one is slanted at about a 45 degree angle and they put grip tape on here. Moving back to the fin, it is a separate piece from the deck. You got bolts here that they just screwed on. It's a little too steep of an angle for me, but it is big. Putting my foot up there, I mean, you can see that it's not the most comfortable, but it is hollow in the middle. So if you do want to just do a quick move Move around, you can easily do that. Underneath the deck, you got 10 by 2.7 inch air filled row grade tires. And then to top it off, you got dual front suspension and dual rear. So you have a lot of suspension built into this. This is a pretty well traveled road and you can hear my voice starting to, you know, quake and <laughs> jitter a little bit. Eyeballs are shaking pretty good. So if you do want to take this off road, I just find a very well traveled path. This is a mixture between sandy and rocky and uh, my front tire is starting to spin out a little bit. You definitely have the power for off road, but everything else is not really fully equipped for it. I'm moving to the LCD screen. There's three buttons here. So power up top, middle button. That's how you change the speed modes. And then there's the mode button that changes the readouts on the bottom of the screen. If you hold that mode button down for a couple seconds, you can access the P menu. And then P4 is how you change the units. PB is the brightness of the screen. That is the level five, the highest level. And PC is the auto turn off. All the other P settings I've talked about throughout the review. On the left side, you have another control panel. Top one is the lights, left and right turn signals. Hit it again to turn them off and then a horn. The lights on this are just awesome. There's a display on each side, Rover on Coulter, a little bit bigger on the right side because it's angled. So if I move the scooter, obviously you can change how big that is, but that is just pretty awesome. And then as far as the tail lights, just a, a ton of light back here, huge lights behind the fin, one on the fender. If you hit the brake lever, this lights up and the two turn signals flash and continue to flash. You got a red logo up top, a blue one in the front. You have lights down the stem, and then you got two eagle eyes in the front. There is a remote. I don't know if the battery's dead, but I can't get anything to change. But anyway, the lights on that are just awesome. So overall, my favorite things about the Coulter, it's fast and stable, and that's what you want with a high-powered scooter. Second thing is the look. I really like the color. That blue is just beautiful. And then all the lights, that's just one thing that I personally like. I've always enjoyed night riding, and so I really like the light feature. As always, I appreciate you guys hopping on here and checking out my content, and have a good day.